All right, so it is the weekend. Many people take it off. What I like to do is study and really get better prepared for when the stock market is open. And you do that by reviewing recent hot stocks and recent trades, your trades and other people's trades. So today I have a very great video to show you. Uh, this is my top student, Tim Grittani. You might have seen this CNN article. Uh, the title was Trader Turns 1500 into 1 million in three years. It was not easy. It was trade by trade by trade. He actually lost the first few months rather consistently. But this article went viral. Nearly uh, 7,000 people have shared it on Facebook. And, you know, it's an inspirational story. But more so, he's now become a teacher. If you go to timgratani.com, you'll see he has his own DVD. It is a must watch. It's called Trading Tickers. It's the highest rated DVD on Investimonials. He's now up to over 2.7 million. He's loving life. It's not easy. I want to reinforce this, okay? Because a lot of people see the headline number and they're like, oh, it's so easy. It's not easy. But it is possible, you know? There's a lot of people who say that we shouldn't talk about this headline number, and that's wrong because it is possible. He's done it. You know, I did it. I took 12,000 and turned it now into over 4 million. There's a lot of other penny stock traders who are doing it, but you have to be prepared. You have to learn strategy and you have to really look at your own trading because as Tim Grittani says in his DVD and in this video lesson that I'm about to show you, a lot of it is a battle with yourself and your own, you know, perspective. And I know that sounds confusing because you're like, wait, what is that? What do I have to do with the stock market? Let me just trade hot stocks, right? Well, a lot of it is sticking to rules, being disciplined, cutting losses quickly, taking good trades, sometimes avoiding trades altogether. You don't have to trade every second or every day. So this is a personal battle. And those of us who have been successful in the stock market, you know, we've really grown as human beings. And I know you don't want to hear this. I know this isn't going to be a popular video, but it's very, very useful because it's not just about the money. It's about understanding who you are, your own personality, your own strengths and your own weaknesses, and using that to really maximize your profit potential in the stock market. If you want to do something like this, you're going to have to really get to know yourself. And, you know, I know a lot of people don't want to do that, but that's what successful traders do. Um, so check out this review that Tim Grittani made of his January trades. Um, you know, he's not at his all time highs right now of profits, but he's still making, you know, a few thousand dollars every few days. Uh, and I want you to watch this video. Uh, I am so thoroughly impressed, not just with his progress as a trader, but as his, you know, with his progress as a teacher. Uh, you know, he gives uh, webinars to Trading Challenge students. His DVD is fantastic, but he also makes these video lessons every now and then. And I just can't thank him enough for his openness and his transparency. You know, he, he doesn't have to do this, okay? You know, I have some millionaire students who just don't want to share everything publicly, and that's their right. But Tim Grittani recognizes that transparency is important and, you know, how his story has inspired so many people all over the world. So please watch this video and leave a comment and really just thank him, whether you see him in the Profitly chat rooms or, you know, on the bottom of this video in the comments section. I'm going to show him all these comments because I want him to see, you know, how his hard work is really affecting others. You know, I have more students than anybody. I have more millionaire students than anybody, and I see more comments from the whole trading community than anybody. But I want Tim Grittani also to get a taste of that. You know, I think he's gotten a small taste. But as you watch this video of him reviewing his January trades, really understand that the amount of time and effort that he puts into not just trading for himself, but teaching for you guys. And, you know, again, I, I can't say I can't thank him enough because I truly mean it. You know, as a successful trader, as a transparent trader, he's done so much for this industry. I hope he's going to keep doing this much for this industry. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, traders out there who aren't transparent. And they claim to be successful, and that's just mad off all over again. And that's heading in the wrong direction. Transparency is the future. Not just talking about the money that you make or you lose, but the lessons from every trade. You know, that's why I love going back to just $12,000 this year, because you can see step by step how I grow it. And I made a lot of mistakes in January. I keep making mistakes every now and then, but I'm getting the hang of it. And my 12000 has grown to roughly 16000 now in five weeks. So, it's not huge money, 
but it's step by step. You know, you don't turn 1500 into 2.7 million all on one trade or one month or even one year. You have to learn a lot, you have to study a lot, and you have to be wrong a lot. But if you keep on this, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. But if you keep on the journey, you will be surprised at how quickly it all comes together after a few months or after a few years and how you grow as a person. So here's Tim Grittani's January review. All right, you guys. So we are through January, the first month of 2016. While I did do some good things this month, it wasn't exactly the start to the year that I wanted. About $10,800, give or take a few bucks. And again, while that doesn't feel like a lot to me, I need to remind myself uh, to put things in perspective, remind myself that, you know, trading small and feeling like I'm not trading well, a five-figure month is, you know, pretty darn good, I guess, uh, considering that I could be doing almost any other job and not be making that kind of money. So, uh, again, just trying to keep things in perspective, smack myself in the head a few times. I really don't want to lose sight of how good I have it. But that being said, I am a perfectionist, and I do want to feel like I am trading well. January, I just came out of the gate a little bit too gun-shy. It was important to me to trade really safe because I did want to earn the right to size up in February. It was important to me to trade really safe because I wanted to get the year off on the right foot. I wanted to see a nice green month to start off the year. So I just became a lot more afraid of losers than I usually am. I, I had a huge fear of taking a loss, especially in the first two weeks of the year. And while that kind of paid off and I had a lot of small green days, there was a pretty good amount of opportunity in those two weeks. And I know I really should have done better even trading a $1,000 risk in those two weeks than I did. In a lot of cases, I would only take about a third size on positions. You know, it was very rare that I found myself actually sized in with a $1,000 risk. A few times it was bad luck and just partial fills. But in a lot of cases, it was that I would get my starter and then just be afraid to put on the ad. Because, you know, usually I'm shorting into spikes and I'm adding as the spike gets closer to my risk level. And instead of having the guts to go for it like I usually do, I had that voice in my head saying, oh no, but what if it breaks through? What if I have to stop out? And after a few days of this, it also starts to snowball because you have a few days where you're up maybe $5,000 like I was through Wednesday. And then all of a sudden, you know, that idea of taking a $1,000 loss here, a $1,000 loss there, it just seems like, hey, that could chew up the starts of my month that much quicker. So I really kind of turtled a little bit. I went into my shell. I was trading a lot smaller than I should have been. And I let that fear of taking a loss kind of rule me a little bit. Now, of course, in the last two weeks, I was a little bit better about it. But I think I still was struggling with overtrading a little bit. And so uh, the last two weeks, I had six red days to three green days, which is not the ratio I'm looking for. And while for the most part, those losses were pretty controlled, uh, they did really just chip away at my gains. And again, my gains uh, still just weren't that large in relation to my loss. So we'll get more into that a little bit later, some of the things I'm going to be working on in February. But let's talk about what some of my goals coming into January were and how I did with those. Uh, the big one that I stated in December uh, that I really explicitly gave myself zero room for error on was that I did not want to add to losers. I did not want to add outside of my plan. And I'm pleased to report that I stuck to that. Zero ads outside of my plan. I did get stubborn on a few trades still, uh, seven times actually here that I tracked where I did not cut a loss. And that number is still too high. But this month, I didn't fight any. I didn't add outside of risk. And as a result, I didn't have any of those large losers like I had in November and December. My worst loss of the month was about $3,300. So that was absolutely a huge improvement compared to December and November. Is uh, Even though I was still getting stubborn, I was doing a much better job of controlling my positions when I was stubborn. I was not adding, I was not fighting, and my losses, they stayed much, much smaller as a result. The seven times I got stubborn, the total losses was negative $10,000 about. Compare that to December, I believe December was somewhere in the $25,000 area, and November was somewhere in the $40,000 area. So we are definitely on the right track there. Another strength is that I only had one time where I had track that I played too large, meaning that I sized in a little bit too big from the start. And even that one, I mean, I, I might not have even deserved a tally there. It really was where I entered a trade and then kind of changed my plan mid-trade, and I didn't size down when I decided to widen my risk. So that, that's why I call it a played too large for that one. Now, I did go a little overboard here. Like I said, there was a lot of times where I was not playing even $1,000 risk. 
So, of course, it makes it a little harder to play too large when you're trading kind of like a wimp in the first place. But still, you know, it's good to only have to track one of those all month. So overall, you know, this this whole thing uh, with me doing the monthly recaps and me sizing down, that all started because I was trying to protect myself from any more large losers. I was trying to fix my bad habits, fix my stubbornness, fix my fighting losing positions. And it looks like that is going great so far. Um, I certainly have done more than enough in that sense to earn the right to size up to $1,500 risk in February. And I plan to. I'm going to be going to $1,500 risk on normal plays. And if there's anything that I truly feel is exceptional, I will play it with $3,000 risk as opposed to the $1,000 or $2,000 risk I was doing in December and November. So this uh, back end of the action here where I need to exit a trade if it's going against me or exit a trade if it's not doing what I want... Um, huge improvement there, but that's not where I'm going to stop. Obviously I still have some issues here because there are other areas of my trading that I really need to improve at still. For those couple strengths that I just mentioned in January, I felt like I had a lot of weaknesses in this month too. I mean, like I said, there still were seven times I had to track that I didn't cut a loss. Seven times I put myself in an uncomfortable situation. That number is still far too high. Just to run down those really quick, uh, we had AVXL early in the month, and that was one where I just shorted into a bounce and didn't cut it because I just don't respect AVXL. And of course, big picture, long term, I'm right. You know, that thing's an eventual zero. But at the time, I don't know how it's going to squeeze. I don't know how much of a ride it's going to take me on. And then I swung it in an account where, uh, you know, buy-ins that are unannounced are pretty frequent. So I did get bought in on it. And I just got very fortunate that my buy-in occurred on its tank day and I got bought in throughout the day. So uh, that loss was only minus $600 overall, um, but it could have been a lot worse. So I kind of lucked out on that one. If uh, the buy-in had been on a day where it was still going up and I'd still been getting squeezed, you know, we'd be looking at a much worse loss here. Uh, same thing, S-U-N-E, um, a stock where, again, I was shorting it into a bounce and the time came to cut the loss, it broke past my resistance level that I was trying to play off of, and I just didn't want to take it off. And uh, that one, I think, was just mostly fueled by thinking about my profit loss more than thinking about the chart. I didn't want to put a dent in my day because I was having a small green day. That really was a common theme throughout the month for me, shorting into bounces and then not wanting to cut the loss on the bounce. Uh, VHC on the 19th, that was one of my worst losses of the month where it had this huge tank out of nowhere. I think it's just a big market seller or something like that. I shorted into that bounce. I wanted to play with 360 risk. And this is actually the one where mid-trade, I decided to change my plan. If I had cut it at 360, it's a minus $400 loss. That's how much I was sized in. But I didn't want to take that. And so I decided, hey, I'll move my risk up to $4 because $4 had been a huge resistance level on VHC. And the problem with that plan was, first of all, I was sized in with about $2,500 risk based off of $4. So I should have downsized if I was going to play off of $4 um, to get myself to that reasonable $1,000 risk you know, taking a partial position off for a loss so that I could have been better sized. But then also, uh, once $4 came, I didn't cut it right away. My, my exits were more like 408 and 420 on the remainder of my position. So that had the best of both worlds. I was in too big given my risk level. And then I got stubborn on top of it because I just couldn't believe that I was going to have to cut that one. The most notable loss of the month was AMDA on the 28th, uh, which is too bad because it came after a couple of nice days and I was starting to get myself back on track. And AMDA, that was one where I read the action really well out of the gate. It stuffed the morning spike attempt and I shorted it as it was going red. And I think I was in from about a 197 average short and then it started to climb back. I never took any off into the dip, which I mean, that's fine. That wasn't part of my plan. I thought it was going to fade off most of the day. And instead it stabilized, it came back and it perked up green. And my risk had been high of day. And I stopped out half at high of day like I was supposed to. I actually had a stop limit order in there, but I didn't put it in an order for uh, the other half. And then when it spiked all the way up towards 230, which, you know, is a very strong break past 205, that's usually my signal, hey, I need to be out into the next dip. And in this case, I watched the dip come and go. I think I was thinking too much about being too perfect on the exit. I wanted to be out around 205. It only dipped to 212. And so that dip came and went. It squeezed me much higher got another dip down into the 220s, let that dip come and go, and eventually I had to stop out later on the 260 break. A good stop, I guess, because later it did go as high as 350, but still, it, it was just way too much of a ride. Very, very dumb trade for me, especially given how I was sized in. So all in all, we had about seven of these losses, and the only solution I can think of is the one thing I've been so resistant to trying, 
which is actually putting in hard stop orders. I'm very paranoid about that, about market makers being able to see the stop in there, moving the price just to trigger the stop, and then just turning it around and collapsing it and tricking me. But I'm going to give it a try. It's something I actually started to give a try in the last week or so of January. I just wasn't great about it. I wasn't super disciplined about putting a stop in on every single trade, and that's what I need to do. And I'm actually using stop limit orders because that way I don't just get out at any cost. I will get filled in some sort of a price window. And so far, uh, I've probably done this about a dozen times, and I haven't had an instance yet where I set too tight of a window and I didn't get filled. So I'm going to stick with it. Maybe eventually that will happen to me, where I don't get my execution, and I'll deal with that when the time comes. But this is protecting me much better than I'm protecting myself so far. So even though that weakness of loss cutting is still there, this should help deal with it. And hopefully I have a number smaller than 7 to report to you at the end of my February recap. If I truly am good about having stop limits on every single order, then that number really should be zero. Now what goes along with this is another weakness I had in January. I started using some of these stop limits. I started getting stopped out a little bit more often because I wasn't giving the stock my usual wiggle room. I was trying to make sure I was totally protected. And I was faked out a few times. And what I need to work on is having the balls to reshort after I cut a loss when I was faked out. Now, I've got to do this within reason. I don't want to just turn myself and keep entering, exiting, entering, exiting, entering, exiting. But in the really obvious ones where it stops me out by a few cents and then slams back down, I think it's pretty easy to get back in on the next pop and say, hey, like that perk high, that is my new risk. It might not even be something to go full size on. I might just take back the number of shares that I just had to cover as long as that doesn't put me over my $1,500 risk. So January, I was really bad about this. It's something I'm going to work on in February. It is a goal of mine to be a lot better about reshorting when I am faked out. I guess it kind of goes with the mentality of, you know, I lost the battle, but I'm not going to lose the war. But it still has to be a pattern that I'm comfortable with. If it's a day one, if it's a stock breaking to a new high of the day, I'm probably not going to be quite as eager to do this if I feel like, hey, that perk slammed a little harder than I thought it should have. Another weakness in my trading in January was setting my risk level. A lot of my trades are bounces where I'm trying to short into a prior resistance area or I'm trying to short a lower high or something like that. And one of two things would happen to me usually in a lot of these cases. Either I'd see a couple of resistance levels close together and I'd get kind of confused. Which one do I want to risk off of? And usually I'd pick the tighter of the two because I wanted to play a bigger number of shares. And I think I took a lot of stop losses I shouldn't have taken as a result of that, uh, just being a little bit greedy and wanting more shares instead of wanting to play the smarter stop. So going forward, February, a goal of mine is in a situation like that where I've got a couple of resistance levels really close to each other, I want to play off of the wider level. I want to size in based off of the wider level. And that mentality of not having confidence in my risk level, not knowing where I wanted to play off of. Uh, in the moment. You know, I think I needed to plan ahead a little bit better because I was making a few too many last minute decisions, I guess you could say. And that's also probably part of the reason why I was very rarely getting to full size on a lot of my trades, where I'd take my starter and then not have confidence in putting on the ad. So in February, I'm going to try to be a lot more aware, um, you know, before I'm even close to entering the trade is if this stock bounces and gives me the opportunity I want, where am I going to play off of? And when I have that level in mind, I'm going to make sure that any entry I take is at least two-thirds size when I get started. Going two-thirds size right off the bat, it's going to help me with a couple of things. First of all, it's going to make sure that I'm playing a lot fewer of these really tiny, wimpy partial positions. Uh, I'm really tired of being in the situation where I get my starter and I'm afraid to add, and then my wins are small, and it seems like any time I lose is when I actually size myself in all the way. But also, it's going to help me out with my entries. Because if I know that, hey, I want to put on two-thirds size, I'm going to be a lot more selective about where I put that two-thirds size on. It should help me be less impulsive with my entries. It should help me take less trades where my risk-reward is a little bit off. So I think this one little rule here uh, can kind of kill two birds with one stone when it comes to little problems in my trading right now. So February rules, here are my four. One is that I must quickly enter a stop limit order in for every single trade I take on a listed stock. No waiting around, no making excuses of, oh, I just want to watch the action a little more. Once I'm in, once I have my position, the stop limit goes in. That way I don't put it off, I don't procrastinate, I don't wind up not doing it. My second rule is if I'm tricked out, I'm going to get back in on a pop with the same number of shares with uh, the high from the little trick out as my risk. 
as long as that doesn't exceed my dollar risk limit. My third rule is uh, $1,500 normal risk. Like I said, I'm cutting my losses well enough. I'm not fighting. I can size up in February. I'm protected enough. But with that $1,500 normal risk, if I'm looking to play my normal risk size of $1,500, I need to put down a minimum of $1,000 risk on the first piece I enter of a trade. And there still may be trades where I look at it and I say, oh, I only want to risk 1000 on this, or oh, I only want to risk 500 on this. But even if that's the case, I'm putting in at least two-thirds of whatever my eventual desired risk is going to be. And finally, my last rule for February. For lower highs or bounce plays, if I have any doubt about what risk level I want to play off of, if there's a couple close together, choose the wider of the two. Don't be greedy and think about using the tighter risk so that you can get more shares. Give yourself that additional little bit of wiggle room. Plan for the wider risk. Go for a higher win rate. That's really my thinking. So all in all, I'd say some steps forward in January, but I still have a ways to go. It's kind of nice to be able to move on to a new area of focus though now, where I'm not thinking so much about the exiting of my trades and not getting stubborn or not fighting, and I'm thinking a little bit more about my entries. I'm thinking a little bit more about the other half of that trade. Trading really is just a constant battle with yourself. It's a constant quest for self-improvement. And for me, the self-improvement over the past few months has been pretty extreme because, like I said, I pretty much just tore down everything about my trading style and I'm rebuilding myself. Plenty of frustrations so far, but I'm going to keep on grinding through it and I'm going to come out the other side better because of it. So after February, I'll check back in. I'll do another trade recap. We'll see how I am about cutting my losers, especially now that my risk has gone up a little bit. We'll see if I can stick to using my stop losses, how frustrated I get by that if I get tricked out a lot. I am going to track how often I'm happy I got stopped out versus upset and kind of feel tricked. So uh, it'll, it'll be kind of interesting to see what those numbers come back as as well. But thank you all for watching and best of luck to all of you uh, this month. And I look forward to doing the next one of these. Hopefully I have some good news to report. My name is Tim Sykes and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm going to talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 